Hi, this is Anne-Marie Gaddy of Classic Movie Hub for an exclusive interview with Claude Jarman, Jr. Hi, Claude. Hello. It looks like uh, you have something in your hand that uh, is interesting. You want to tell us what it is? Uh, I'd be happy to. I ran across this today. It's a watch, and I had it in my closet. And it's a watch that I received in 1945 at Christmas from Clarence Brown and Sidney Franklin, the director and producer of The Yearling. And it was uh, inscri inscribed on the back. It says, uh, uh, Christmas uh, for Jody, uh, Mr. Brown and Mr. Franklin, uh, Christmas 1945. It's very valuable to me because it brings back a lot of memories in fact, I went back into my little archives and I found a picture. And this is the picture of the three of us, Clarence Brown here and Sidney Franklin here, and we're comparing watches on the set. This is a very uh, moving moment for me and I still remember it. So um, why don't you talk a little bit about what it was like to meet Clarence Brown? Where did you meet him? What was it like to work with him? Well. I guess the simplest thing I can say is uh, Clarence Brown changed my life. He found me uh, taking down Valentine's on Valentine's Day 1945 in Aiken School in Nashville, Tennessee. He was doing a search to find a young boy to play the role of Jody in The Yearling. And he came to my classroom, saw me, and uh, the rest is history. He ended up coming to my house. Uh, later that day, I wanted to take some pictures, and these are the two pictures that he took that were sent to Sidney Franklin in Hollywood. There's another one where I look pretty homely there, and even on the back, it's the original picture, which says, The Yearling Jarman Boy, Nashville, Tennessee. Can you turn it around so we can see what's on the back? Oh, you can see the inscription on the back. And... It's very rare to me because these are the original pictures that were taken. So that was kind of it. And we ended up uh, going to Hollywood and, uh, you know, ended up uh, starting in April filming and took a year before the film was finished. So it was changed my life, no question about it. And when your parents heard that uh, this man had come into your classroom and was interested in talking to you, um, and came to your home, what, what was their reaction? Uh, that was be bewilderment. None of us believed this. We, we just thought it was kind of a, a game they were playing. We, we couldn't take it very seriously. And it was only after a week when we got a call from Hollywood saying, let's go to, uh, for a test in Los Angeles, that it became a reality. Oh, interesting. Um, so let's talk a little bit about filming The Yearling because it was your first movie. You were an unknown and Clarence Brown was really taking a, a chance with you. What was it like to work with him? Well, first of all, he was, he was really a perfectionist. He was trained as an engineer. Uh, he, he knew exactly what he wanted. It would take uh, sometimes 40 or 50 shots before he got what he wanted. He was very difficult to work with for the crew. Uh, they felt he was a little unfair, he was a little mean to them. He was not mean to me, but he was tough. He expected me to know my lines, he expected me to uh, be available to work. Uh, he, when we were in Florida, uh, every night he would take a walk with me or I'd go with him, and he would want me to talk about what we were doing the next day, particularly if it had to be an emotional scene. So he wanted me to keep focused on what we were doing. And uh, fortunately I did, and fortunately it came out right. And, and did, when you talk about you know, doing a scene, I know you did a bear scene, did he show you what to do? Did he help you? How, how did he convey what he wanted to you? Well, he would, he would literally show me. Here's a, here's a picture uh, when we're doing a scene chasing the bear where he's in the water showing me how he wanted me to uh, escape or go over to the where we were hunting hunting for the for the bear so he was he was a very hands-on person he was also fun i mean he would do things like he would he would end up boxing with me and showing me different things uh going to ride on uh, uh 
taking a, 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 a sailboat. I mean, it, it was just, I would go out to his home in uh, the valley in Calabasas, and he had a plane. And on the plane, he would, uh, uh, he would give me a ride back over the mountain into Santa Monica. So he was, he was, he was very, very, uh, very, very nice to me and very, very warm. And he was like a second father. Did you keep up with him in, when you were an adult? Did you see him again as an adult? Um, I, I did see him. Uh, I was still at MGM. I was making a lot of movies during that time, but I would always stop by and see him. He had an office on the set. Uh, later, uh, he, gave, he, he was a graduate of the University of Tennessee, and he had given a, uh, a bequeath to the, to the school for a uh, performing arts center. And here's a picture. We went to the opening, and it's Jane Ryman, uh, Clarence, and uh, somebody from the University of Tennessee. And we were there for the uh, opening. They showed The Yearling as the opening film. And that was obviously when I was younger, that was in 1971. And then did, did, you, did you make another movie with him? Well, of course, then after that, uh, uh, I made the movie, which I was very proud of, and, and he was too, in True to the Dust. And that was, uh, that's a whole other story. Okay, well, we'll look forward to hearing that. Thank you.